I had a friend that, despite being a little unstable, was a rather cool guy. We would hang out and watch movies, knock down some drinks, just all around enjoy life. On occasion, though, he'd come relating his terrifying experiences. He shrieked at me, saying that he had been controlled by a demon while trying to sleep, and his body immobilized and his mind racked with fear. I explained to him about sleep paralysis and dreams carrying over into the waking reality. And eventually he understood, and his fears and experiences subsided. He also told me of his intense fear of alien abduction, and explained why he hadn't been the last person an alien would want to abduct, and once again, once the rational explanation planted in his head, he continued about his life. This sort of scenario would happen time and again with the same results, so when he called me once, feverishly mumbling about it. What it was, I didn't know yet. I went to his home to talk to him, and he seemed much calmer, but still visibly shaken. I asked him about it, and he tensed up momentarily before mentioning that something was stalking him. He said he'd seen long, thin fingers trailing on the wall and snaking around corners as he went walking down the hallway, and when he checked, the space was of course empty. He also told me about a low, raspy breathing sound he heard on the other side of doors. I walked around the house with him, showed him that it was empty, and in the kitchen saw a nearly empty bottle of whiskey, his drink of choice. I asked him about it, and he broke down crying, telling me his brother had died. I knew the alcohol was his way of coping, though things were starting to come together. I figured... I'd stay around until he was at least sober. And the next morning, he was still grieving, but other than that, he was all right. I explained what he experienced was probably a mixture of the alcohol and extreme stress, and he agreed that I was probably right. The following week, I had to go on a business trip out of the country for a couple of weeks. When I returned, my voicemail had several messages from him. The first few detailed the things that he had experienced that night a few weeks ago, but with greater severity. He'd catch glimpses of it in the mirror, not just hands this time, but brief sights of its smooth, sickly green body. He sounded absolutely terrified. The next messages were calmer, but still scared. He said, he started seeing a shrink who'd prescribed him some antipsychotics. He told me he still experienced these scary encounters, but with therapy, he was coping, but still scared. I called him up, and he still sounded uneasy. I went through the situation with him and told him that, frightening as what was occurring may be, it couldn't hurt him. He reluctantly agreed. The next night he called me back. The reception was poor and his voice was fast and jumbled. I could only make out a little... Oh God! Oh... It... You need to... Only come... Whenever... You... Stay... Scared! Then the call closed. I went to check on him the next day, as he was still not answering. There was police tape everywhere. I asked an officer what happened, and he said that neighbors had heard terrified screaming coming from the house, and that's when they arrived to investigate. They found a guy, stripped of his skin and dismembered. Horrified, I went home and drank until I passed out. And I woke up to some scratching sounds at my bedroom door. Low, raspy breathing. I rushed to the door and opened it. Nothing was there. I stumbled to the bathroom and threw up. And out of the corner of my eye, something pale 
and green seemed to flash by. I stumbled back to my bed and passed out again. When I woke, it was morning. Still, the scratching and rasping. I just missed it to the previous night's binge, staying around longer than expected. Then the scratching grew louder. The breathing seemed angrier somehow. And my thoughts then drifted to my friend's last words to me. Stay scared.